Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. It is Monday, February the 10th, 2020. This is Clyde J. Kale, and we are with the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 33. And I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. The theme for this week was being safe on the internet. Artists in particular get targeted by scammers of all kinds. And I've been targeted. Diane's been targeted. Constance has been targeted. So we're going to share some of our stories here with the, and I also um, had recommended some videos that talked about some scams and uh, some of them I hadn't heard of, you know, that I'm going to keep an eye out for. Diane, you want to start off with a scam story? <laughs> I get scam letters probably two or three times a week at least, <laughs> and they're almost always pretty much the same. They come from different people, but and maybe they're worded slightly differently, but they're pretty much the same gist of the story, that some guy or woman, their spouse is a birthday or an anniversary or something coming up, and <laughs> they, they saw my work on the Internet, and they want to purchase it. They don't um, tell you a specific painting that they saw. They don't have any price <laughs> or, or anything to go by. It's just general. And that's kind of the first telltale sign that it's a scam. I mean, you, it, the first time you get one, you get all excited and you think, oh, wow, you know, somebody's really you know, interested in my work and <laughs> you get all excited about it. And, you might answer them back and say, well, you know, like on my website, my prices are there. You know, I I only take PayPal as a payment. They'll offer you to send a check to you. um, And then the check will bounce. And in the meantime, they wanted you, they'll they'll pay you more than what the painting was worth or what you had charged. And then they want you to send that difference in the money back to them. So, but in the meantime, their check bounces, and so you're out the money and your painting probably if you sent it. So that's that's a real uh, common scam that's out there. That I don't know of any artist that I know of that hasn't gotten that scam. I mean, everybody talks about it all the time. Yep. And I've gotten it so many times. It's just it's frustrating that there's people out there that do that kind of thing. I've only I've only received uh, about two times personally and ever since i did i think you guys remember last year i told you told you about it 
Um, it's because I have enough skills on the internet. Uh, I got vicious. Uh, I decided, so he wants to play. Okay. <laughs> so what I did was I uh, sent him, he, this individual had, had request a particular painting in the price. So I sent him the image of it and he, and he replied, yes, that's the one. And it was the same thing. It was for his wife and he was, uh, going overseas and his shipper was going to contact me and the blah, 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 blah. I mean, I knew it was a scam right away. Okay. So I said, I only accept via PayPal. Well, I don't know if I can, you know, I, I, I want to send you a check instead. So I replied back, no, only PayPal. I will send you an invoice. So now with PayPal, you can set up to have it sent out automatic invoices. So I sent him an invoice. In the meantime, before I sent the invoice, I looked up his email address and I looked up the service provider and I sent a uh, alert message or a spam message to his service provider stating that this individual was, was uh, uh, you know, falsifying or using, fraudulent, using his email for fraudulent purposes. His service provider provided me, thank you for identifying this, okay? We will look into it, take action. That happened first. Then the first invoice came. I sent out no reply. I waited two days and I had this, the PayPal automatically sent a second invoice requesting payment, you know, and then the, I waited another two days and I had a third invoice. And I said, this is your final notice. Please remit your promised funds or collection action will take place at that. That one came back rejected and his email was gone. <laughs> it's it <was> nowhere <laughs> to be found. Since that time, I have not received a single fraudulent type email of that type of that. So I don't know if a service provider took action or if I scared him or whatever, but, uh, <clears throat> this guy, he, he didn't want to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, fun. I want to add in too that you can, um, if you get an email that you're not sure of, you can put in some of the phrasing from the email and um, do a search, and it'll, you know it'll search for um, other scams, Absolutely. and it'll bring up a lot of them. There are lots of sites too. There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> specific sites on the on the uh, uh, on the internet for artists that ha that list scams too. So you can, mm -hmm. you know, it it's. You, you just have to be due di diligent. You have to really look at these things because they're, they are, uh, they're affecting us emotionally, you know, as working artists, we're so excited. We want to sell our work, you know, it's, wow. I mean, I remember I was just like, Oh boy, I read it first. You know, I was just so excited, but then I waited about five minutes. And then I searched on the internet and I found out it was a scam. So that's when I got angry. I said, I'm going to fight back. <laughs> Gossip, yeah. this, you got a story you want to share? Yeah, I got one of the, the first one I ever got was one where a guy was interested. Was that a lady that was interested? I forget which. It was a, either the wife or the husband was interested in getting a painting for the, uh, the other uh, other spouse and they wanted to send me a check for and make arrangements to have it picked up by their shipper and um so i just called paul and said what is up with this you know i'll just send them a, a paypal invoice and let them pay for it through paypal you know i'll just put a connection to it you know because it was at a website and i have an itsy site so i'll just connect it to itsy and all i have to do is click on it and pay for it and then I can set up the shipping through Etsy and ship it out that way. And uh, so I told her that's what I was going to do. And I never heard from her again. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Then another thing that I heard from was these people in Manhattan who wanted to show my work, but they wanted me to pay a bunch of money to show my work in their place. And, um, uh, so I called uh, called him again and said, "What is up with this?" And he, he said, "Print it out, print out all the uh, 
find lines to read them. And so I did, and I said, yeah, I guess I don't want to do that either because <laughs> they wanted to charge me like $2,000 to show my work there. And I was going, he says, that's not normal. He says, those people are, are trying to, to take you, you know, if they, if they want to show your work, they're not going to charge you anything. Yeah, I guess that, I, I received the same thing after, uh, after completion of that, you know, Paul Klein's course, you know, I, right. received, I received an email from a gallery in uh, Chelsea. Uh, New I York. think we were still going through the course when I got this, you know. So. I was all excited. Boy, I was jumping around. Yeah, and, I was too until I, they, he said, print it all out and read it all. He said, and then you'll figure asked, out what's going on. And so they, that's what I did. Send uh, three images. So I sent three images and then they replied back, these are great, Clive. We're going to enjoy uh, representing you in our exhibition. Um, Included mm -hmm. is a PDF documents of the contract. Please review the contract. Yeah, and that's, that's the that contract. Right away. So <laughs> I looked at the contract, and at the very bottom, it said, "When you remit the, remit this con, when you set, return this contract, this signed contract, please include one thousand three hundred dollars." Yeah, it was like ouch. <laughs> he contacted Paul. I said, "I said, is this normal? The gallery's opera? Because yeah, hey, I'm sorry. Uh, Up until not normal." I, I was innocent. I mean, you know, I didn't decide to go try to go professional until 2017. So this stuff was all new to me. Right. And he, he sent me a, me too. he sent me a really nice email explaining, you know, he said, those are, they are crooks. You have to be careful about this. And a really, really nice email about, you know, the, you know, what to watch out for. He said, these are, comes under classification of uh, vanity galleries. Right. It, they're legitimate in a sense. They will. They probably would would have shown your art, but do you want to pay that much money you, when you can get your art displayed in other ways? I mean that it was you know yeah. it, was, it was very nice you know, and so I have now as a result, I've received invitations from uh, galleries. I've received invitations you know participate in, in exhibits, and I do my due dil diligence. I s research them on the internet. I see what the, you know and. If anything is a uh, hundred dollars or more for a fee, forget it. You know, <laughs> uh, I asked Paul about that. You know, I said, "What about these? You know, these contests, these exhibitions? They, they you know, got a fifteen dollar, twenty dollar, thirty five dollar fee." And he, and he said, "That's normal because they're usually that they they take that money to pay for advertising of the open call for the artists, and they also sometimes they they combine it to uh, pay the." Um, uh, curators, or especially if it's a jury, if it's a, if it's a jury contest, he said that's that's legitimate, you know. So you know, I feel more comfortable. I don't mind dishing out that fifteen dollars or twenty. But he said anything that's a hundred dollars or more, he said forget mm -hmm. it. That's that is some kind of a scam, and uh, you know. So for you folks that are listening, your artists, you know, that may be listening, keep that in mind especially younger artists, or I keep saying younger artists, but if you're old like me and you're just starting your career, you're still, you know, an you're emerging artist. artist. That's right. You're an emerging artist and you still have to be aware of, the, of these things. Yeah. It's just a shame that there's people out there that are taking advantage of, you know, people that are un, unaware of stuff and it's, it's really ruins it for everybody, but, you gotta be very aware of it. Yeah, it it makes you it, it makes you uh, uh, frustrating and depressing because we want our art to be accepted. We want our art to be, and we want to sell our art. And uh, then we have these people that that come along and and uh, try these things. In some of those videos, did you uh, I recommend? Did you hear of any new scams or? Any, I didn't hear anything new. I was aware yeah. of all the things they talked about. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's the same way with me. Yeah, I, you know, the uh, I, I think of that uh, that Raffi video. You know, he mentioned something about uh, art fairs, uh, like with the when we had the big the big art fairs, like the Venice Biennial and the uh, Art Basel Miami, and you know, some of those big fairs. He said uh, people that organizations that uh, insinuate that they're going to get you into the uh, Art Basel Miami or they're going to, going to get you into Venice. Um, <clears throat> with the Art Basel Miami, 
I had something similar. And at first, I thought this was a scam when I first received the email invitation with the folks out of Switzerland, the art box uh, uh, projects. But it wasn't a scam because they were honest and upfront, and they said we are the exhibition is is not located in the main building of Art Basel, but this is during Art Basel week it's in a smaller gallery down the road. And they were very honest and upright, you know, and and about this. And uh, you know, the entry fee was only fifty you know, fifty dollars for your you know, the digital image you know, displayed. So I participated in that, and I received a big boost of publicity and they sent photographs, they had videos and, you know, but they weren't advertising themselves as we're getting you in the art basil. We are getting you in an exhibition during the week of art basil. And I thought that was, you know, they were honest and upright. Now what Rafi was talking about, some of these organizations that say, we will get you in, in a booth in, in art basil or in the Venice biennial. But they want like two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollars, you know, and it's not really a scam, but it's an awful lot of money. That- well, and I wonder if they prey on people that um, are not in that area, knowing that they probably won't be there. Like, so they wouldn't really know if their art was actually in the main exhibition hall. I know, yeah. and it just. Yeah, it's just it's sad that that kind of stuff goes on. I know exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. why these these uh, art box uh, project folks. I am so dedicated to them because they have done me good. I mean, they sent me pictures and they had had a uh, videos. And what impressed me was you know they put the images on a, on a big uh, eight foot tall digital uh, you know screen, and then they had these little like footstools in front. And they showed a video. People, the crowds were like, you know, around watching because my image was in a slideshow with other artists' images. And so, like every thirty seconds, you know, a new image would come up. So I know people saw my my artwork, you know. And then they also provided a courtesy photograph of my artwork actually displayed on, you know, on the image that they. Yeah. And when they do these, uh, like I'm scheduled to participate in a ex- exhibition in March in Spain, in Barcelona, Spain, the same kind of an arrangement, you know, and everything. So these folks are, uh, and they, they also, uh, uh, during uh, Art Basel Miami, in advance, they sent me a PDF file with a flyer for me to put a couple of my other images and a brief, brief artist statement and biography on it and sent it back to them. And the purpose was it was a color, it'd be a, it was a colorful flyer that if, somebody is interested sees my artwork then they would print that out and give that to you know the individual which I thought, that's, that's pretty cool you know and so yeah. and if the way they set up is if uh the art is if somebody wants to buy the art the actual art they just arrange they just set the contacts up they take no commission whatsoever you know they are a hundred percent they're funded by nonprofit organization by the uh, government of Switzerland and their sole purpose is to give emerging artists a presence in the world you know so there's good and there's bad out there folks you know and you have to do due diligence I remember when those folks first contacted me way back in October and you know I've had an exhibit in their actual they have a real small gallery in Switzerland I had exhibit an exhibit in their gallery I was, was, and that one was, was free of, free of charge. And, uh, I was, I was skeptical. I was really, I said, wait a minute, here's another scam. Boy, I researched them and everything. And, and on the internet, I found a real early comment, one negative comment from an artist and that's all. Otherwise it's been nothing but all positive And, uh, so there's good, there's good organizations out there. You have to do your research. You have to really look over these, uh, these, these opportunities because, you know, as an artist, we, uh, want to get our work out there and we want to advance our careers. And this is how you do it through exhibitions and through, uh, contests and, and whatnot. Any more to say about that? That, ha- that hammered enough or. <laughs> <coughs> I think you got it. <laughs> okay. Another thing I didn't uh, uh, 
include the video there. Uh, Sergio Gomez had put a video up about uh, his uh, a group that he was part of. A, their Instagram account got, was hacked, and that's oh. that, that's another thing. Just being safe on the internet, making sure that you have adequate passwords. You know, your password is letters and and numbers and and uh, characters, and you know, keeping your and don't have the same password for, for everything. Everything <laughs> out <laughs> because they hack one, and they're going to get into them all. Like yeah. I, uh, I think uh, Constance showed me she has a book. I have a little a little uh, notebook that I keep all my passwords written down because I can't remember them all. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I do that too. Keep a paper copy because I, I don't yeah, know how many times your phone book is going to, your phone's <clears throat> going to blow up and they're all gone. So. Yeah. But th I have like a, a password saver thing on my computer even. And I don't know how many times that thing has just dumped everything. It's been empty. I don't know why it happens. I guess when they do updates or something, it just clears it all out. Probably. But, yep. See, we're, we're for yeah, our, we all, have. all showing our, our little notebooks <laughs> there. <laughs> Each other. A little black books. <laughs> yep. Our little book. And if we lose those, we are dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, like, oh my gosh. Next to my it's one thing to have it on your phone or whatever, but it's a, a, a Printed backup is the best, the best, uh, the best version. It's good, to, uh, it's good to change your passwords out, you know. Yeah. Often, you know, and so. Well, they, nowadays they have you change them out, you know. So that's why I always write them in in pencil. Yeah. You know that way you can erase it and write a new one in. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. So. I mean, I've got some of mine. I got lines drawn through the previous one, and and uh, but how. Hackers, uh, they are, uh, you know, they're out there. And in fact, I keep receiving, I haven't received one for a while. I think they, they finally stopped. But um, I kept receiving a uh, a message from a hacker, hacker, and you guys will probably hear this, where he claims that uh, he has records of my pornographic videos and I was a nasty person. <laughs> And that unless I send him four hundred dollars, it's sometimes it's four hundred dollars, sometimes it's seven hundred dollars or whatever in Bitcoin to Pacific in this account within twenty four <laughs> hours, he will release release this information to the world and blah 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 blah. Okay, I get that. I was getting that quite often, and he was using a password that which I recognized from an account that I had used back in two thousand five. <laughs> So he got onto some website where I had that password and, you know, trying to convince mm -hmm. me that he was legitimate, you know? <laughs> and of course, you know, I changed my password frequently. So, you know, I don't know what, uh, what account he got that from, but, uh, cause I've been on the internet for a long time. So, you know, these, there's, there's, awesome. there's they different. They try everything. Yeah. And some of them are pretty good at, convincing you that maybe that you know something's legitimate and i mean they even the letterhead or whatever you get has the oh, yeah. of that particular company you know that they're saying they're from they look real like you know absolutely oh yeah people like like paypal some people will send me paypal oh. paypal uh things saying that this or that or whatever i don't I don't ever answer those. I just go to PayPal, not PayPal. through that email. Damn. I just go to straight to PayPal through the PayPal thing. And then what I'll do is there's always a, there's like a spoof email. Then I forward that email to spoof PayPal and they, yep. they uh, you know, so, cause I'll, 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 I'll receive, forward emails uh, like that to spoof at PayPal.com and then that way, uh, they're say, uh, you know, there's been suspicious activity on your account. Your account mm -hmm. is closed to please click on this button to update. Yeah. Yeah, right. right. And they're trying to get you to go update the, update your password on their email. Absolutely. You know, like, How stupid can you get? <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> like, I don't think so. Well, some people fall Square, for it. Don't they want like, to yeah, they do. You know what I'm Squarespace. Uh, Stripe uh, does. Some people do that with the Stripe, which is another thing like PayPal. 
and square does people do it with square too i i, I never, never go i never email. answer those emails i just I, go straight to the account and check to see I'm if something's never, going on and it's i have i have never ever used stripe i have never ever used square but i get emails all the time saying my account is invalid or there's something wrong right well like, you know uh, when i had square i had to use stripe <laughs> and i had to use square and i still use square when i'm selling stuff at a show yeah and I use PayPal, so I use I've used all three of those before. So, um, I've even I've, gotten them for Yahoo, though. I mean, any company that's out there, mm -hmm. Amazon. I've gotten them from Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. Um, too. Yep. I never and click I on that real. <laughs> Recently, there's been quite a few. I've been getting quite a few for Squarespace because Squarespace hosts my main site. You know, mm -hmm. and they say uh, your uh, your billing information is incorrect. Please update. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. I just never uh, click on it. I just I know wait. when the bills do on Squarespace. Believe me, I because I pay I I pay it by an annual yeah. or or a biannual, you know. So uh, people, be safe out there, please. Yep. Be safe on the internet. Yes, you have to get on the internet, but use some common sense. Don't let these crooks get you. All right, that's the tip of the week. Be safe <laughs> on the internet. Be diligent. Research if you. Any, if any of these things, have a cup of coffee before you you, you answer your emails. And don't click on them. Right, <laughs> and, straight to the site and check it out. That's <laughs> it. You can do a search. You can do a Google search on all of them, and believe me, it'll come up. They're scams. It will come up, and you're probably in, enjoy reading all the previous previous variations of the stories. <laughs> There's some daisies out there. Okay, we got any announcements to make or anything or uh, anything coming up? You got a show coming up here, don't you, uh, Constance? Or when is that? I have not heard yet, so I haven't paid the dues on the show yet. So okay. I'm waiting. I think by the end of the month, I'll know one way or the other, and I'll be in Mayfest, hopefully. Diane, are you arranging for for anything to come up here? No, not not at the moment. I have, I've kind of backed off a of showing right now. I'm trying to get some other stuff organized. <laughs> Okay. So, <laughs> all right, and um, maybe next episode we will review our goals and tasks and uh, you know see where we're at there. Let's uh, let's give ourselves a week to think about that. You know, see what we come up with. All right, we won't we won't embarrass each other now of <laughs> meeting go. <laughs> Maybe we'll get something done before someone has something to talk about that, <laughs> that we achieved. <laughs> oh, life gets in the way. But, hey, if you're serious about your art career, you, you make room. You make time. Thank you so much for visiting with me, Diane and Constance. And thank you, our listeners. This is Clyde J. Kale. You've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 33, for February the 10th, 2020. Bye-bye, Diane. Bye-bye, Constance. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, Good night everyone. Jeff. Good night, everybody. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt, and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kell. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constant Brosnan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S. Clyde J. Kell at www.cjkartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening. <laughs>